There's a lot of confusion around blue light. Uh, we all understand that ultraviolet light is dangerous, but what we fail to realize is that blue light is just a, another wavelength in the light spectrum, and it's also dangerous. It has high energy. People have gotten fearful not understanding what blue light really means, so I want to clarify the message around blue light and remind people that, in fact, blue light is dangerous. In fact, it's more dangerous than ultraviolet to the back of the eye. A certain amount of blue light is required. We need blue light to get us going in the morning to activate our, our, our visual system uh, and our circadian rhythms, and that's absolutely necessary. But too much of a good thing is a bad thing, and that's the problem we have. Now, things like um, digital screens and whatnot give out some blue light and they can definitely interrupt things like circadian rhythms but it's not clear that they're giving out enough photons to cause damage to the back of the eye whereas sunlight is a major issue and in the past we lived a more natural lifestyle surrounded by trees and grass and other good things that absorb a lot of the blue light but now we live in cityscapes where car windows and concrete and everything we do reflects that bright light back into our eyes so we're actually putting ourselves at increased risk um, by being outdoors in modern uh, society, in modern locations, and not protecting our eyes appropriately. So we used to wear our hats a lot more. If you look at photos from the turn of the century, everyone was wearing a hat. No one wears a hat anymore. That blocks a lot of the light that gets into your eyes. Uh, and we now have modern sunglasses that can help us as well, and lots of us don't wear them. So it's, it's that kind of thing that we need to look at in our modern society. So what happens is, as a photon of high energy light enters the eye, or any, any uh, tissue for that matter, it can knock an electron off of an atom, and that causes it to become reactive. And that's what these, there's different types, type 1 and type 2, but they're reactive oxygen species, and they create damage. They interact, they're, they're hungry molecules that are interacting with our tissues and our molecules. And once they do that, they can disrupt things like our uh, cell membranes. And once the cell membrane is disrupted, the cell stops functioning properly, um, and then it, it starts to not do what it's supposed to do within the eye. What we're thinking about it more the long term is the accumulation of damage. So what you're getting is damage to the proteins, the RNA, and the DNA. And it's the DNA that we're worried about because that's what uh, transcribes all of our cellular mechanisms. Now the cells in the back of your eye, you're stuck with them for life. Your skin cells are replaced every five days. They're exposed to UV and blue light, but they get replaced. The retina is part of your central nervous system. It never gets replaced. At the front of the eye, uh, the optic media blocks the ultraviolet light. So really, um, it's only the blue light we have to worry about for our retina. And nature has done a wonderful thing for us. It's put these macular pigments in place, which are carotenoids that specifically absorb blue light. And if you look at their absorption pattern, it exactly matches the blue light that gets through the, um, past the lens and up to the point where blue light or green light is no longer damaging. So the macular pigments are our natural shield against blue light, but they also act as antioxidants. They're doing two things at once, and they're right in the right location. So they're sitting on the photoreceptors, which are the ones getting damaged by blue light, and and they're there to stop the blue light from getting to them and the RP, but also to act as antioxidants to recover any, recuperate or any damage that's been done, so to neutralize those free radicals. If you um, starved primates of macular pigments for their entire lives, so they didn't have any macular pigments in their eye because they didn't get any in their diet, um, they would get um, thir three st stage 3 drusen at the age of 35 instead of 65 when you had macular pigments. So that suggests there's a, a direct link between the amount of macular pigments you get and the progression of drusen, which is our first stage of looking at AMD. Right now, a lot of the techniques for assessing macular pigments uh, do tend to take a little bit too long. Some of the newer technologies that we're developing now, you can do the test in less than a minute, which means you really can fit into a regular eye exam, which is, I think, part of the limiting factor in the past, is if you always have to set aside separate time, 10 or 15 minutes to do a test, you're not likely going to do it on everybody, but if we can get a test that's easy enough to assess macular pigments in everybody during the regular eye exam, then suddenly it makes it accessible. We can start monitoring people, tracking them through time, and giving them advice around what they need to do around blue light and macular pigments. So, I mean, I think that's the nice thing, is that you can, if you can identify someone that has uh, lower macular pigments, for example, and their, their natural protection is lower, then you've got stuff right in shop already as an optometrist. You've got sunglasses, which are really critical, transition lenses. Both of these things are going to block a lot of that blue light as soon as you get into the natural environment, which is where it's most dangerous. But blue light blocking lenses, while there's been some criticism about them, they do cut out 20% of the blue light, which, while it doesn't seem like very much, is actually really critical. If you imagine you're going to live for 100 years, and you might have got AMD at 85, if you can cut that down by 20%, now you're going to get it at 105. Well, you might not live that long. So you delay it past your lifespan, you're not going to get AMD. So that's the sort of thing that you can do. And as well, lots of um, shops are selling macular pigment supplements, which do indeed boost your natural levels of, mac of macular pigments, which give you added protection naturally as well. So if you can get across this, the idea that people with fair skin need to protect themselves from sunlight, people with low macular pigments need to protect themselves from blue light, and it's the same thing. So it's, it's that sort of idea that we're, we're all at risk, and we need to be doing more to protect ourselves, but some people are at greater risk than others.